Hey everyone, so the last video I recreated an LM7 and I put that in the Trig Trig X. This time I'm going to be attempting to recreate an entire car, but again, the same rules apply. There may be some mistakes and I'm going to make a lot of assumptions. It's not going to be perfect, but it should be reasonable. So today what we're going to be doing is recreating the 2001 Golf TDI. Yeah, so the TDI engine is the ALH engine. I've got another worksheet printed out here. It's a spec sheet, more like, of uh, just some basic specs of the car, and we're going to follow that and assume anything that's not on there, and hopefully we'll come out with something decent in the end. So our model year is going to be 2001. I'm using this body here, the 95 wagon. So this engine is kind of known for being <laughs> very strong, outliving the cars, in fact, at least around here. Uh, but the cars themselves just seem to rust away before the engine actually dies. It's one of those rare car engines that can actually do 600,000 K. But anyway, so I'm just making it steel, monocoque, and steel. I might come back and change that just because I want to get it to be approximately the same weight. Uh, the front suspension is McPherson strut, and it doesn't say what the back is, so I'm going to assume it's double wishbone. It's probably not, but that'll help the handling out a little bit, and it might make up for some of my bad tuning. Okay, so here's where things get interesting. The in the engine block is an inline four. Uh, I don't have the material specs, but we're going to use the cast iron block. The bore and stroke are specified. So the bore is 79.5 millimeters and the stroke is 95.5 millimeters. So that gives us uh, 1896 cc's, which is 1.9 liters. And again, I'm making an assumption here. I'm going to say it's an overhead cam with two valves. I believe it has eight valves total, so that would be two per cylinder. And then overhead cam is a guess uh, onto the head material. We're just going to match the block again cast. Here, uh, we're just going to go with the most basic stuff. We don't need anything fancy. Uh, now, the compression ratio, what, what this sheet says, it says 19.5. I'm guessing that's just a diesel thing to have such a high compression. Uh, but 19.5 to 1 is not even possible in automation, so we're going to just use that how we need to to get the right power. Uh, we're not going to have that be proper, and cam profile will just leave as well. Now, big thing that's important here is we're going turbo. Uh, we'll keep it journal bearing. I never use journal bearing turbos, but for this, I will. And uh, we'll also do a fuel economy preset intercooler. That's a little bit unrealistic. Uh, this is probably going to have less than 100 horsepower, so... Yeah, we'll uh, adjust that as needed. And we'll go uh, direct injection. It's probably EFI, but again, I'm just uh, going to make that assumption that it, it'll be direct injection for us. It just makes the most sense for this build. Now, trying to be realistic, I am going to put mufflers on it. We're just going to put the cheapest ones we can. And immediately, it makes way too much power. That's 112 horsepower, but not enough torque at 193. But here we go, there are some big changes we need to make here. Now this car tops out at an RPM limit of 3750. So we're going to lower it down to 3800 just to give us that 50 horsepower, or not 50 horsepower, goodness, 50 RPM advantage uh, because it goes in hundreds. And the actual power of this car is uh, 66 kilowatts, which is uh, 89 brake horsepower. So we've got to lose 10 horsepower somehow, and we need to gain 20 torque because the max is uh, approximately 210 newton meters so yeah just gotta make a couple tuning sacrifices for that and we should be good now one thing you can do in automation is you can raise up the fuel mixture to be way too high and then your car will actually smoke and i'm kind of thinking of doing that just for fun <laughs> it doesn't make any practical sense but it, it's just fun there we go we only need 80 octane but we're using 91 i don't know if i'm gonna keep that so i've tried a few different setups to kind of get what i want out of this one but I think I'm going to stick with this. I think it's reasonable. I'll just go through it with you now. I know we're making five more horsepower than we should, and we are still 20 torque under, but I think it's going to be fine just as a comparable engine. We'll say that it's uh, got a couple aftermarket mods on it. So I've put the compression up. I wanted to get it into the high range because it just makes more sense. Uh, cam profile is low, just gives us a more, much more flat curve, except for this little torque mountain here. Don't worry about that. Turbo is still fuel economy preset. I tried to mess with it, just made this worse, so I'm just going to leave it. The intercooler is pretty small as well. Uh, fuel, it's the same thing. I lowered down the fuel mixture. Uh, ignition timing is low as well. And exhaust, I've got it at 50 mils, which is about 2 inches, so that's reasonable. I don't want to make it crazy big. I know that it is restrictive here, but 
it it doesn't need to be huge we're trying to be semi-realistic here so that's what we're going to go with i think that's actually going to work out okay we'll have to see how this thing goes i think it's going to be a lot of gearing that gets it to go well but this car is going to be pretty light too so we'll see now for this build i want to do a wagon and i have used this wagon before i believe uh for one of my previous builds but there just aren't many good ones that i can see um this car body is pretty specific the one that i'm looking at i'm i am using a reference for this one so i don't want to make it too outlandish i do want to kind of copy the the main design a little bit we'll, we'll copy the front and the sides but we'll probably do our own back so i swear every time i see one of these things they are in silver i don't know why i was actually thinking when i was thinking of this build that we could like fake some rust in or something because they always have rust around here and also here and also along the door sills uh, and some of them I've seen are like extremely bad on the hood and uh, down here by the window as well but I don't know this is gonna be fine I don't even know how we'd fake in rust I do want to try it on one car eventually though yeah so fixture time let's see what we can do with this one gotta try and match this car at least somewhat awkwardly these are probably the closest in terms of just light shape that I have uh, but they don't really like you can see here that these don't really have a, a matching thing for the golf, so yeah, we'll have to um, probably make our own custom piece here. So sometimes some sacrifices need to be made, <laughs> and I'm just going to be using these mod headlights. I think they'll work for this. Uh, it's not going to be a perfect replica. Uh, okay, I, I'm kind of throwing the replica thing out of the window. We're just going to make our own design here, just loosely based on the actual car. Now what low buck car like this would be complete without hubcaps? I can't help but feel like with this build so far, all I've done is created a worse looking Ford Fusion. Uh, so this is the front, <laughs> at least so far. I don't know, it's it's coming along. I'm actually not having too many issues when designing it, which is surprising. I usually uh, struggle with this. I end up making things like five or six times just because I'm not sure, but in this case, it's all kind of just flowing together. I think what I'm going to do is the same sort of uh, fog light I did on the previous car. Well, I guess it's not really a previous car in this set, but uh, the Dangan, if you remember, I made like a fake fog light section, and I think I'm going to do the same thing again on this. All right, so these kind of look out of place, but with a couple of adjustments, they can definitely fit. But this is what you get on the, well, maybe not that bright of white, but this is what you get on the luxury version. And then because this is the low buck version, everything gets blacked out yeah so any hopes and dreams of copying the golf are beyond out of the window so we're just going to go ahead and copy some of its styling and uh, i guess move on after that but i've added a little piece here just like what they have i tried to get rims that were similar but i mean those will just have to do uh, i'm going to go ahead and do door handles and stuff but there isn't really much to this car like it it's not that fancy it's very plain and simple so Nice and easy to design. Alright, we got wipers. That's one step done. And then door handles. I don't know, the most basic possible door handles ever. <laughs> one thing that I definitely need more mods of is door handles. Please make more. And then we need... Oh wait, this is the... <laughs> I was looking for this on the Trig X build, but it's the uh, step that you can use. And it actually works pretty well to fill in big gaps. But anyway, I'm trying to find the roof rack. Don't know where that went so quickly i'm just gonna skip ahead we're going front wheel drive we're going auto and i think it's a four speed actually it's a five speed now we could go manual for this but i haven't done an auto car for a while so i'm gonna leave it like that it says maxing out at 203 kilometers an hour i doubt it i will come back to that in a bit open diffs but this will allow us to have an engine in there and we can kind of see what we're working with specifically with exhaust now uh, seeing as this is a diesel, most of them that I've seen do have uh, dual exhaust like this. You got, we have our tiny muffler there. <laughs> that is a really small muffler, but they usually have dual exhaust, so that's what we'll do for this one. All right, things are looking good. We just have to design the back, uh, but I put exhaust on and put a little bit of a uh, piece here to cut it out. We have a nice antenna, door handles, and just a reminder of what your nightmares look like. And now the back end is tricky. I have honestly no idea what I want to do back here. It's really not going to be fancy. Why don't we go ahead and do some of the other little details first then? Uh, just because I'm not sure. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is what I've done in the past where I have a little bit of a cutout at the back for the license plate and such. 
There is actually a license plate that comes with it, but it just doesn't work for me, so I'm going to make my own. So it kind of looks like I'm just putting a face on here, but the idea of it is that uh, you change all of these to be body colored, including the mesh, and then you have a nice cutout, and you can put a trim piece on top, uh, and I find that it looks pretty decent, so... It just adds a little bit of extra detail to the cars. And then with that, we can duplicate the license plate that's up front. Just take it for a spin all the way to the back and put it in there. Perfect. Yeah, from the side view, it sticks out, but that's just because this has depth and this will not go flush with it. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it as is. It, it's pretty okay. Big thing, though, is lights, and we obviously need to name this as well. All right, I think I've done it. <laughs> I think that's it. The perfect lights, they just have to be nice and simple. It, like, the, the least fancy lights possible is what's on here, and that just works for me. And I've rotated them slightly, I think that's going to be even better. Just got to make them slightly taller. And, okay, they're breaking. Now the car officially has no turn signals. So it's basically a BMW. Alright, in terms of design, I think that's it. Doesn't need to be anything crazier than that. Just a nice basic 100% silver and uh, TDI swapped vehicle. Now what we need to do is give it a bit of a name. Uh, it needs to have some designation of its diesel heritage. So let's uh, put some numbers on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shrink down a one uh, because it kind of looks like a dot and then I'll uh, put that as a dot. So it's a 1.9. All right, that works. 1.9 and then we need, we need a name for it. Uh, I have no idea. Again, I have a lot of manufacturers that I've come up with, and then I just keep adding more to the table. There's honestly, like, no rhyme or reason, reason for these. I'm just making them up as I go. Like, I've used this symbol on the car, and I think I'm just gonna put that again up here, just to have that uh, representation on it. I don't know what name to give it, what brand for this to be. Not sure. Alright, this has got to be one of the stupidest things I've come up with, but... So the original car that I, I semi-based this off of is either a Golf, a Jetta, or a Passat. Why don't we just call this the Tennis? Alright, so here's what we've got. We've got the Tennis 1.9D, and the brand is going to be Auto. So it's the Auto Tennis 1.9D. Yeah, it's uh, not the worst design I've ever made. Alright, so the Auto Tennis needs some sort of gearing here to make sure that it actually drives well. Up to 50 kilometers an hour in first gear makes sense. No wheel spin either. Let's check the... Actually, we don't have graphs yet. We haven't gone far enough. Uh, tires, we're just going to do a medium compound. I do actually have specs for tires. So the tires are 195s, which is exactly where it is. And they are also 15s, which is exactly where it is. So that's perfect. Don't even have to change that. And in this case, it's going to stick with the steel wheels. Uh, it will pro we might have to change up the chassis because I feel this is probably going to be too heavy. But we'll see. Uh, so the fronts are actually vented discs. And again, I have specs on this. So the size of them, believe it or not, is 280 mils. So we'll make it that. And I'm assuming they're just one piston. And the back is a solid disc. It just says disc, so I'm going to say solid disc. And the size of that is uh, 232. So we'll just make it 230. Aerodynamics. Okay, there, there's literally nothing for this car. It has no aerodynamics. Uh, and it will seat five. So we'll give it a standard interior. I don't think that they're... Interior was too good on these. Uh, we'll also give it a, I don't know, a standard CD as well. <laughs> yeah. Safety, power steering, ABS, and uh, we'll go standard. It's the 2000s, isn't it? Uh, standard 90s safety. That's good enough. Oh, you know what? I just realized I have a spec on here that we can use. Uh, 180 was the top speed, so we'll make it 179. It's not the top speed in automation, but it'll work for this. And I've gone ahead and uh, put on sus some suspension. I just gave it a normal preset. That's pretty much the perfect ride height. And look at that. Pony car again. The Dangan and the Tennis 1.9D. They just are loved by the pony market. Somehow fun as well. Goodness. All right, so let's go back through the graphs and make sure we're not doing anything too out of the ordinary. The brakes are uh, not strong enough, <laughs> so we'll have to fix that. I think I'll just increase the pad type. Um, that's not really, like, it doesn't make that much sense uh, for this car to have race pads on it, so we'll keep it a little low, but I do want to be able to stop, in the case of automation at least. 15 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour. Oh, goodness. 
Uh, that is really slow, but at least it has no wheel spin. Pretty happy about that. Aerodynamics, uh, it's creating lift, so it's essentially a plane at this point. And uh, we're okay here. Yeah, okay, let's check the weight. This is the next important piece. Uh, it weighs 1,316 kilos. Now, the actual car weighs 1,238. So it does weigh a little bit more than the actual car, but it does have a little bit more power. I think, let's just go quickly to the back here again. If galvanized steel is lighter, then we'll switch to that. Now, the only one that's lighter is AHS steel. I guess we could try it. Uh, we'll, give, we'll give it a try, see if it makes much of a difference. Okay, that does bring it down a decent amount. It's probably not realistic, but for the sake of the build, we'll do it just like that. And I think that's going to be it for the Auto Tennis 1.9D. Not a bad build overall. Pretty easy one, to be honest. It's easy when you have specs and you can just follow instead of guessing. And yeah, I'm having fun with this. So let's go compare this to the Dangan and see which one is better. Oh, you know what? There's one thing that I probably should add because you know we're going to need it. Let's put a tow hook on here. So here is what it looks like in beam, but seeing as it's me, I forgot a few things. Uh, it doesn't have any mirrors. <laughs> it doesn't have any fuel cap, but I think that's it that's missing. And there is one major issue that I sort of realized a minute ago. It's the same body as the Dangan, <laughs> except the Dangan is the car version, and this is the wagon version. But you know what? That's not going to stop me. It does seem to be at least a little bit smaller. Uh, I did adjust the proportions of it a small amount, so um, I guess that's why. I don't know, though. Uh, somehow I'm overlooking the, the small details, but it's just a lot of fun to make very weird iterations of these cars. I guess you could almost say that this newer version is like the um, Mazda and Ford relationship type thing, where one company makes uh, the car and then they put two different badges on it. Yeah, we'll, we'll just go with that on this one. So in this case, it's a uh, Japanese-made car with a German engine uh, labeled as a German manufacturer called Otto from the previous Japanese manufacturer of the Dangan. And also, they forgot to import the mirrors, so yeah, their mistake, not mine. Okay, let's see how it drives. Um, good news on that, it does actually spin wheels. Uh, it has a decent amount of torque, but you can really tell it's down on power, and it's a pretty... Uh, pretty basic automatic as well it's not got much fancy going on with it but it's still not bad to drive i, I like the the 1.9 d is a nice subtle touch on it and uh it does put out a little bit of black smoke every now and then with the fuel being as high as it is although i did have to turn it down in the actual build driving wise it it's on a normal preset for suspension it just kind of flops around shakes around a little bit it's no comfort preset but it still does wobble a significant amount, but again, it's uh, it's just a family car. It's nothing crazy. Now, in terms of testing, I don't want to really do any performance stuff versus the Dangan, because honestly, I don't even know who would win. Probably the Dangan. I forgot how much it weighs, though. It might be at a disadvantage or an advantage just based on that, but I think what we're going to do is some uh, diesel sort of testing. We'll try and pull some stuff. That's why the hitch is there, and we'll see how much this torque is really worth. Alright, so I've obtained a very large utility trailer. In fact, it is larger than the car itself, but it doesn't weigh that much and it should be able to hold the Dangan entirely, so it should be fun to see what this does. Just have to drive the Dangan over, which might be a challenge on its own. It's been a while since this one is gone. Oh boy, okay, I forgot how much smoke this one makes. It's almost more of a diesel than this other one. And, oh, okay, maybe, uh... It's a little bit too low as well. All right, the prize is in my sight. Let's see if we can get the Dangan into the trailer. This is always an issue for me. I have a lot of trouble with this. I remember in the first uh, Autoflex games that I did, um, I had so many issues getting things into trailers that uh, <laughs> that event recording took several hours. But anyway, let's uh, let's just pull this up on here, nice and easy, nice and slowly. Ooh, it fits. Perfectly and due to the nature of this trailer we can raise up the back end and it's gonna push on the Dangan and keep it in there Which is good and also due to the nature of this trailer We get to see the suspension compression on the tennis and you can see how much lower it gets uh, Just with a car in there. Let's see if it'll drive with it though 
That's the real test. Now, it is front-wheel drive. <laughs> okay, it is moving. Uh, generally, oh goodness, I didn't realize how high the front was. This is a, just a good sight right here. Alright, so my goal is going to be to exit the school parking lot. And I want to drive over to the gas station, which is uh, across to the other side of the map. I'm going to see if I can do that uh, with relative ease using the grunt of the TDI, which is, I guess, slightly more powerful than it should be and slightly less torquey than it should be. So, okay, rounding a corner is usually pretty challenging with this, but as long as you slow down, it's not too bad. Uh, the car itself is sagging pretty badly, but there aren't really any mump any bumps on the way over there. Uh, it's it's not too bad so far. We're actually able to pick up some pretty decent speed. I mean, 70 kilometers an hour will get you through most roads around uh, where I live at least. Can't go on the highway. <laughs> You'd just be getting honked at like crazy, but you could theoretically pull another car with this. Okay, things are starting to get wavy as I speed up, so I'm going to slow down. We'll take a right here. The gas station is right there, but there's also a significant bump in the way. Ooh, that was rough. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't take any bumps at speed if you're going to do a setup like this. My goodness. Yeah, just nice and smooth all the way to the gas station. Uh, it's going to just burn this red light, though. Just trying to slow down. And hopefully we can just ease our way in here without any issues. Well, rip. Looks like the only station in town doesn't have diesel, so... We'll just have to go elsewhere. <laughs> Actually, it, it says it has diesel right there. What am I talking about? Oh, well, too late. Missed opportunity. So I accidentally exited out of the map, uh, which was dumb. But I figured that was just a good opportunity because now we can try this car at something it is absolutely not made for. This is a rally circuit. Let's see what it'll do. Now, starting off, I'm anticipating wheel spin, and that is exactly what I'm getting. Uh, I'm not picking gears in this car as it's an auto. So, uh, we can't rev it up at the beginning, we're just gonna have to let it go. Okay, maybe I should try this with a trailer. <laughs> this map for me is famous for not really working on stream, uh, just because it turns into a slideshow, but it is a lot of fun just to uh, mess with it with other cars. Hopefully it shows up okay on YouTube, otherwise I won't be using it again. I guess what I can do though, I'm kinda just done testing this car, it is, I mean it's flawless in every way, except for it's lack of mirrors. <laughs> I should probably fix that before the next time I use it, but probably gonna forget. Uh, the thing is that I'm making a lot of cars like this, just ones with more interesting engines in them. I'm doing that on purpose because I want to be able to swap them into other things. Now that we have a TDI spec engine, we can do TDI swaps. Now that we have an LS engine, we can do LS swaps. So expect in the future that some of the cars that I've made in the past could be TDI or LS swapped. And that does indeed include the modular VFR, uh, which you haven't seen much of on the channel recently. Oh no, we're going to run over the crowd, aren't we? Okay, we're not a Mustang at a car show. Yeah, so you haven't been seeing too much of the modular VFR recently, but uh, it's uh, it's still going to come eventually. I'll, I'll still do stuff on it. I just haven't uh, thought about exactly how I want to use it yet. Probably what's going to happen is I'll do a sort of competition between engines. The thing is that most of the competition will be pretty obvious because the chassis is pretty good, so it'll be all up to the engine to see which one is better. I'll have to pair some close engines together and see how they do. Uh, so yeah, let me know which engines that I've made that you want to see in the modular VFR. If you want to just see the stock LM7 versus uh, something like this, for example, the TDI, uh, then maybe we could do that, I don't know. I'm going to end up doing a whole separate video on that by itself, so get ready for it. But yeah, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of this car in the comments. It's a pretty basic one, but I think it looks pretty decent. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun to just make some super basic cars sometimes, and then later on make upgraded versions of them. Who knows, but... <laughs> I've done it a few times already, why not do it again? But yeah, that's it for this video. See you again next week. Hold on, don't go too far now. I've got some people that I need to thank. We have Will, Canadian Steel, Boris Ramirez, and Slow Fried Chicken 69 Thank you again for your support. If you want to be added to this list, make sure to hit the join button. And if you want your art to be featured at the beginning of the video, or in this case the art is of making cars, uh, then go ahead and post it in the Discord and I will randomly be choosing from it uh, to put at the beginning of videos. But yeah, that's it.